Jonathan Grenard is no longer a Houston Texan. He and gone. He has signed a deal with the Minnesota Vikings for four years. It's going to be up at $19 million AAV. So it's less than the franchise tag. It's a four-year deal, which, I mean, that makes sense for the Vikings. And I'll be honest, though. My first reaction when I saw this was, why did the Texans do this? It's less than the franchise tag. $19 million is right where we all thought it was going to be for the most part. I, I'm surprised the Texans just let him go. You're surprised. I sense disappointment in said surprise. Also disappointed. Now, there's plenty of stuff we're going to get to over the show. Christian Wilkins, Eric Armstead are names that we're going to talk about. But there better be another move. Because while you know Foley, as my guy from the Jags that signed with the Texans now... You that's still are too intimidated to say his no, first name. No, but that's what, that's what they call him because other people are intimidated. His last so name, I mean? Okay. He's, he's just Foley now. They've made some little signings to the defensive line already, which is nice. But losing Grenard, you were 10th in the NFL in sacks in 2023, and you just lost your sack leader. So that, yeah, disappointed for sure. I'm assuming that they didn't think he was worth it. And I don't know that he was worth it. I don't know that he's worth that contract. That, to me, is a deal that looks like the Vikings will be able to get out of after two years if things don't keep up the way that they were this past season. I think he's a good player. They will miss him if they do not replace him in free agency or the draft. It'll be hard to do that. But I'm not upset about them saying, yeah, we're not going to spend that. But I am assuming that they are going to make other moves defensively, like you. Yeah. Something better happen because if you take a look at the salary cap situation for the Houston Texans this season, and you take a look at, as far as against the cap, what the Texans are paying this year specifically against the cap for their offense, against what they're paying for their defense, it's $122 million for the offense. It's $59 million for the defense. I saw that. That's That shocked me. And this is why I push back so hard against the people who are saying, you got to get Saquon Barkley. You got to get a wide receiver. No, you need help on the defensive side of things. Is it Eric Armstead, mm-hmm. who was proposed by John and Lance this morning? I think that's a great idea, given that he's got familiarity uh, being a defensive tackle in San Francisco with D'Amico Ryans. But... You do not have a lot of money invested in your defense. And, okay, you got a quarterback. You don't need to have as much invested in the offensive side of things when you got a guy that's potentially top five, top three, whatever you want to call him, and C.J. Stroud. So I wonder what the next step is. I am not acting like this is a big deal that Jonathan Grenard has left, has signed elsewhere. But it is definitely noteworthy. Mm -hmm. And... I don't know who the Texans are going to get to replace him. That's a lot of production, as you pointed out, to replace on the roster. Now, what's not what I'm worried to your point of maybe they didn't think he was worth it. When you look at his his games played over the last four years, even this year, he missed two games because of a grade one ankle sprain. That's not great. That's assuming Aaron Wilson's report is correct on what the actual injury was. But, you know, he's barely played in two of his four seasons here. The two seasons where he did play most of the year, he didn't play every single game. So that does probably factor into this equation of can you pay a guy $19 million a year? If you've already seen for four years that he can't stay healthy, he can't stay on the field, which is a huge problem. I don't think it's the health, though. I I think it's he had 12 and a half sacks were not going to pay him for one year of 12 and a half sacks. Yeah. Especially considering Will Anderson on the other side is the apple of everybody's eye, right? All those advanced statistics that Jeremy Branham was making fun of on the Killer Bees after calling the trade for Will Anderson uh, the worst day in the United States since Pearl Harbor um, or 9-11, one or the other, whatever. I forget which one it was. Uh, what I do know is that Grenard has only done this for one season and that Will Anderson was lined up across from him and that by a lot of metrics, which, okay, always uh, I got to take those with a grain of salt, Anderson was towards the top, is... Grenard's production, a result of Will Anderson. Obviously, we're going to find that out the next season. I think you could make a strong case that the Texans believe that that was the case. Yeah, and and that's where when you when you look at this team going forward, like they can replace that guy. And and you're right, it's one year of twelve and a half sacks. 
I I don't hate that they let him go. I, I'm just disappointed. I, maybe it's I'm antsy. Uh, Texans Twitter is antsy. I literally just saw my timeline. You, you it's you, been an hour and six minutes. Someone just tweeted that. I'm like, okay, guys, it's going to be okay. The same exact thing happened with the Rockets last summer. Yeah. Where Fred Van Vliet didn't agree until like 6 p.m. Yeah. When free agency opened at 3 and people were like, the, the Rockets are going to strike out on everyone. They ended up signing Fred Van Vliet and Dylan Brooks. Yeah, Sean, it's, it's not a good place to be online. Uh, during free agency for any sport. It's just not. It's not. I am strictly on the notifications tab because I set Twitter notifications for uh, all the newsbreakers. Name a newsbreaker. I have I have a notification for him. Shefty. Boom. Rappaport. Boom. Rossini. Boom. Okay. Aaron Pel- Wilson. Pe- Aaron Wilson. Pel- Pel- I noticed Aaron Wilson tweeted out the uh, Tony Pollard news and uh-huh. then came back. And since I have notifications on, I got a notification when he retweeted himself five minutes later. Um, <laughs> Dove Kleiman. Okay. What? If I want to get stuff five minutes after the people I have notifications. Fair enough. I, I got Pelissero. I got... <laughs> I got uh, I got MLA football. Uh, no, no Schrager, but I do have uh, James Palmer. Uh, hell yeah! I think I God. win that. Do you have Jordan Schultz? No, Jordan Schultz. Don't do Jordan. No, I'll don't do it. Don't do oh, okay. it. No, because okay. he's the one that said that Tony Pollard was going to the Texans oh. and it was wrong. See, I, I, have, I have high standards on if you make the Good. list. I like okay. high standards. We need high standards. Jonathan Grenard did not follow those standards, Paul. No, they clearly. didn't. And, and you, you still sound disappointed. So where well, are you? Because I'm sick. Maybe it's because like I can't breathe out of my nose. Why can't so you I breathe just, out of your nose? I don't know. It's allergies, probably. Do you mm. have COVID? No. Are you spreading COVID to no. me, my beautiful body? No, I, I'll, I'll do my best not to do that. We're six feet apart, ish. Uh, We're not six feet apart. Like four. <laughs> yeah, it's like four. I'm five six. So like, how far is six? I don't feet think you could lay down between <laughs> between those two seats. I'm, no, I just it's a lower deal than I thought he was gonna get. Stand it's, frame, it's forty-five please. million dollars guaranteed. It's not that much. I, that's a good deal. The Texans could have done that. They better have a good answer. Daniil Hunter, who now it's clear that's who the Vikings are going to lose. Local kid, bring him in. Like there, there needs to be. This is where the splash is. I know you love Chris Jones. That's a big contract that he got. Um, I'm glad. Are you glad the Texans didn't do that deal? Five years, 158 million. I mean, if he that's was available, so much. I would have wanted them to do that. That's so and, much. And money. I would say, I would say the same thing for for Matabuike. Uh, Less so with Christian Wilkins. Now that Eric Armstead is available, I want it. I don't really want to pay for an edge rusher when I have Will Anderson on a rookie contract. That's a good point. I think you got to look at your roster from a where do we allocate our resources and do you want to have multiple guys that you feel like you can get similar production from one of them making 20 million or so a year or whatever the average annual value is for Grenard. Yeah. Uh, if you go back to what I said with the the amount of money against the cap for the defense versus the offense, okay, well, maybe you do, but I, I feel like you'll be able to find other edge rushers as the next couple of days unfold. There will be more cuts. There will be more players available. Grenard was going to get a lot of money just because of being the guy with 12 and a half sacks at the end of the year. He's a good player, but is that what you want to pay money for where you could sign maybe two players that are less talented than him but are are good. I, I would take the two players who are good. And I, I think that's how the Nick Casario, Houston Texans, are going to operate. I know it drives everyone crazy to constantly bring up the New England Patriots, but that's where he was, and that's how they used to operate. And sure, they had Tom Brady, which helped them out. Guess what? The Texans have C.J. Stroud. That helps them out a little bit, too. And, th- and I wouldn't say, I know, disappointed, yes. I wouldn't be upset about the Texans' pass rusher situation until the draft. If they don't add now, I'm okay with that. There's a lot of talent in this draft that they'll be able to acquire when they're on the board. And bringing in a cheap guy, to your point, to two guys on rookie contracts at the most important positions would be a it would be a big move and a good move for them. They so would have I'm to, okay with that as well. I'm assuming if they were to get somebody that was a rookie that's actually going to be an impactful guy, that first round pick would be towards a pass rusher. And I suppose that certainly opens up possibilities in the draft for maybe more than just a corner, which is a lot what a lot of people have been pointing to them going after. Maybe it is a pass rusher on the table as well. But um 
Where they are right now is they have Will Anderson as their best edge rusher. You're hoping he's healthy all 17 games. And yeah, you're going to have to find production elsewhere. I do think it will be possible for them to find production elsewhere, though. A couple other small moves they made over the weekend. Desmond King's back. I mm-hmm. like that move. Yep. That I what was like $1.2 million. It's like $2 million. Dollars. $2 I mean, million. Dollars. You're talking about a, a guy who's very good at uh, in, in run support as a defensive yeah. back. It, so that's a nice move to have. Yeah, bizarre career trajectory with him still. The fact that he got cut by the Texans, then brought back, and then now he's signing a new deal with them. I like that move. I, I like Desmond King. He's a, he's a good He played very player. well when they brought him back, and yeah. I, I think there were some questions like, wait, why the hell did they get rid of him? And, yeah. and he goes to the Steelers, and he didn't even use him. So, yeah, he comes back, and he played pretty well down the stretch.